Stop that. Stop that. Stop uh, that. Yeah, yeah. I hear him chat to the noise. Go too quick, can't stop for the talking. I hear him chat with the boys. Just too sharp with the prize. White girls let it tell me I'm awesome. Yeah. Hot like fire on the pan. If you wanna touch my please use caution. Call like zero degree. I'm out the cage, gotta let out the beast. Revolutionary guy let out the streets. Locked in a cage, I'ma let out the let out the let out the let out the, let out the, let out the sheets. We can't get around now, forget my peace. We take the west, I take on the east. I'ma put him in a cage, never let out the let out the let out the yeah. I hear him chat to the noise. Move too quick, can't stop for the talking. Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. I watched Roadhouse last night. Late into the night. Two word appraisal. Bad. Ass. Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. With a comma in between. Uh. Oh, no. It was so bad. I don't, trust, I don't, I don't trust you with this it was one. So Dan. Ba- I don't trust you with Mike, this one. Mike, I promise How you. How is this one bad? The trailer just look amazing. Mike, I promise you. I promise you. It's bad and it's ass. Conor McGregor is terrible in Dan, it. Dan, I haven't he seen it He looks great in Come it. Come on. He what? looks like he he's does, Conor McGregor. He does look great. And Valerie accused him of getting ass implants because he's he's wow. nude, he's nude early. They don't test for that anymore. Uh, put it uh, on the poll, please, at Levitard Show. Uh, is it possible that Conor McGregor got ass implants? Uh, a spoiler alert. Small sm- spoiler alert, Mike, that may ruin it for you. Somebody got attacked in Key West, just in Key West, by a crocodile. That happens. Saltwater crocodiles Damn. in the canals? That's Very a dangerous. Big problem. This is not how that would happen. There would th- this. Did there's... you ever watch Bloodline? Like that's exactly how that happens. Absolutely. A crocodile? Yeah, saltwater crocodiles in the keys. Wow, Absolutely. tell me you don't go to the keys off. That they're, thank you. That's what I was trying to tell you yesterday. Everywhere. It's like one of the deepest fears I have. You can't jump into a canal on the Keys. He's never been to Hogs Heaven. Dude, you've never been to Hogs Heaven. The ocean is not a place that you're getting attacked by crocodiles. A canal is a place you might get attacked by a crocodile. He was on a dock, Dan. There are saltwater crocodiles everywhere in the ocean down here. Everywhere. Everywhere. There's orcas now in the ocean. Turkey Point. Coconut Grove. The Keys. Those canals in the Keys, they're very close to the open water in the ocean. That's all salt water. That's not necessarily brackish water. That is, they are, the name is salt water crocodiles. Exactly. It yes, does, it does in the ocean. I, all right. I can be wrong because I did not know that. I, I well, see. you're wrong about two things because Roadhouse has a 66 it's on Rotten badass. Tomatoes. Yeah. It's badass. Yeah. Tony, One word. You no saw the original Roadhouse, by the way, had 41% on Rotten also Tomatoes. Also badass. Tony, no, that's badass. So, yes. Tony, you're telling us you're the only other one here, I think, who's I seen saw it. half of it. So I got to the point where you you saw the saltwater croc. So I you're got just to on the point. bad part, not the ass part. I'm I'm waiting for more ass to be kicked. Right now, Dalton has kicked some ass, but not as much ass as he needs to. Uh, He's Dalton, about to kick way more ass. Has he ripped out a trachea? Not yet. Yet, because that is essential. That you, is canon. You but that happens it? later on. Tony, you liked it so far, Dan. I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt early. Okay, later on we're gonna catch up. And there's fill there's out the no badass. way Mike will will like this. The, the writing is so bad. <laughs> the writing I, is so I, bad. I guarantee you, I will like it. Just from the trailer, the fact that it's in the keys, yeah. the fact that Conor McGregor looks like he knocks it out the park because all he has to do be is be Conor McGregor. But he does it starchly, stiffly. It doesn't feel very good. He's a bad actor. He's very bad at <laughs> acting. Okay, that works. And the writing is very bad the for him. The kid and the dad are also bad actors in the glass but book. I, I love Whatever. going to the keys. It's shot there. So I just think from being able to look around at the scenery, I'm going to get a kick out of it. Oh, kick. How does how is his roundhouse kicks? Are they good? Because that's also essential. Uh, I will wait for your uh, appraisal. I Once will... I finish Madam Web, I'll get around to uh, oh. Roadhouse. I was surprised before the show. This has never happened before in terms of me having to step in to prevent a fist fight. I had to hold Lucy back when Mike Ryan called it March Midness and said that everything he saw yesterday was overrated. 
The ones who get it, get it. Exactly. The ones who right. don't, don't. And you don't get it. Uh-huh. You don't get it. <laughs> Excuse me, Lucy, with all due respect. And of everyone here, I'm probably the only blue blood. And I know what March is all about, having made consecutive very deep runs into the tournament. And it's a lot of trudging through mud and and sewage to get to, like, ah moment. That's what college sports is all about. It's bad. Sewage. Crap. It is awesome. You clearly didn't watch Nevada Dayton. That game kicked Dayton ass. Dayton was down 13. Okay, late. That's like being down 50. Lucy, I'm gambling again. I had Nevada. Rest assured, I watched it all. <laughs> it's, just not, it's just not good. The game isn't great. It would have been a lot better if Miami were in it. Yeah, I can wear that homerism on my sleeve. But it's just it's not good. And I understand getting all super hyped up for it. Yes, it's the best sports day of the year, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't match a regular old NFL Sunday slate. It doesn't match a Saturday afternoon in the Premier League. It doesn't match five 10 p.m. puck drops in the NHL going on simultaneously. That. It doesn't match these things. You it doesn't get match. Jack Golki in these things. Golki. Okay, we need to talk about Golki. How did you not start the show with Golki? Golki is what March is all about. A guy with that kind of hairline who's going to be a terror in rec league in two years, dropping 10 threes against Kentucky. I want to be Golki. I love Golki. That guy is 40 years old. That Possibly. guy has the perfect first name for somebody who makes 10 threes, Jack. Uh, that guy is the reason Jay Wright says the following, quote, the era of taking these young freshmen and trying to play against older players is over. I think uh, Cal did a ph- phenomenal job with these guys all year. You can see they're playing against grown men. The guys on Kentucky will be far better pros than any of these guys on Oakland or any of these guys in the tournament, but they're not as good college basketball players. And that's why we love it. Jay College Wright. basketball is for the everyday folk, okay? We're not making it to the NBA, but we're going to have fun and we're going to screw things up in the process. Right. We're well, going to hit 10 threes uh, right J- in Mike Ryan's face. Jack Golke actually gave voice to this, uh, that point there exclusively in his postgame press conference. Obviously, we come in, we're the, the underdog by uh, all measures, but... Uh, you just got to, as a player, you can't think that way. You got to go out there and you got to think that you have the same talent level as them. I know they have draft picks and I know I'm not going to the NBA, but uh, I know on any given night I can compete with those type of guys and our team can compete with those type of guys. And that's why I was so confident going into it. And that's why I say we're not a Cinderella, because when we play our A game, we're, we can be the best team on the floor. Uh, put it on the poll, please, at Lebetard Show. Have you ever thought of Cinderella as 50 years old? Looks like Billy Donovan's hair when he wakes up in the morning. Oh, yeah. It does. It has an Eddie Munster vibe to it. There's a lot of fo- forehead surface area. Yeah. That's not- what Bradley Cooper looked like in Wedding Crashers, by the way. There's something's going on there. You may want to look into it. What was the name of, was it Andrew Gase, the Australian player for Seton Hall a million years ago? The first time I remember watching a college game and saying, wait a minute, that's not fair. That guy, that guy's clearly, uh, you know, he's much, Old. he's much older than everybody else. And uh, I agree with Mike. This part cannot be disagreed with. It's bad basketball. It's so That's bad. the point. Okay. You want to watch good basketball? Go watch the NBA, Dan. Exactly. This is not for good basketball. <laughs> There's no Some such thing. Sickos. This is for Jack Golke. <laughs> there, there is no no such thing as good basketball. In fact, maybe oh, the late maybe the ladies can come through today because today is also their day, and I'm excited to watch that tournament. No but the basketball. it was it according was, to you. There's no good basketball. It, dog, I watched all the games yesterday. I need to see I, your jumper again. What? I need to see your what? Jumper. Excuse me. I know ball. I need to see your jumper. I know what? ball. After a means jumper, I need to see your jumper. My jumper's talk fine. Ball. I need to see it. My my jumper is fine. I'm also I, I play within myself, and I'm not gonna camp out at the perimeter. That's not my game. All right. I'm a junkyard dog inside. Everyone knows this. Also, I close out pretty well. All right. I'm not gonna jack up six shots on the outside just because you want to see this. I'm an efficient basketball player. I grew up reading, you know, heat index. Mike Ryan just mentioned closeouts, and I will never look at them the same after what I saw in a terribly bored Clippers game here where James Harden goes through the paint, passes it in the corner to his teammate Kawhi Leonard, and then closes out on Kawhi Leonard, just tries, uh, pretends to try to block the shot of <laughs> Kawhi. What? Now, keep in mind, they are up 20. It's the, it's the only defense James Harden has played in about five years, and he played it on his own teammate, 
Um, and look at the score, incidentally. They get the rebound after this to go up by 24. Did he get the rebound? Because he put himself in terrific position to grab that board. I think that he got the ball back and then passed it again. Yeah, he did get the Heads rebound. Heads up play by James Harden. For those of you who are not watching and just listening, again, James Harden came through the lane, passed it in the corner to his teammate Kawhi Leonard, and then was the closest to close out on Kawhi Leonard and jumped toward him and stuck a hand in his face. And Kawhi missed, <laughs> missed, Great the, defense. missed the shot. After the game, Ty Lue just shook his head, and James Harden said that, you know, we're just trying to keep it interesting late, <laughs> late in the season. They're up by 25 against that team terrible portland team here's why people love march madness and they 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 conflate the upsets and they forget about the really bad games going on what they love about march madness is that it's happening at 11 30 a.m eastern actually that, that's a great take that, that's that, a really, you know what i gotta give it to you there that's, that's what sets point. it apart and if you're not myopic and you watch European soccer and these international competitions, you realize, or if you watch tennis that's played in different time zones, you realize that this is afforded to you across the entire sporting landscape. And then when you line it up in terms of excellence on the field to play, you start poking holes on March Midness. This is uh, where I disagree with Mike because we're having two different discussions, okay? The bad basketball, I think we can all come pretty close to agreeing with. I'm pretty upset with Mike's general spoiled about basketball attitude where it's gotten so good that he thinks it's all bad. Like the, the professional skill level has gotten so incredible that shots from the logo are normal and now Mike is saying that it's all bad. But the place where he's right about some of this is – this is, however, um, how is it, uh, what, what is it that are 49ers, people who look for gold through pans. Miners. Uh, yeah, miners. Okay. Uh, this is what March Madness is. The pan has just so much dirt, mud, garbage, and worthless in it. But every once in a while, sift it out. you shake it loose, and what do you got? You got Jack Golke making 10, 10 threes for Oakland to knock out Kentucky when all you're rooting for is for Kentucky to get knocked out. All I was rooting for yesterday was Kansas and Kentucky to lose. Samford, I had, don't even start I had that. Samford to win. I don't know if I, I don't, I mean, a lot of people say this. Nobody cares who you had, who I had. But to have Samford to win as a 13 and to lose that way when you get the perfect block at the end, the perfect block at the end, and the referees followed up when the referee needs to not do that you can't the referees denied us that moment so if there's a nugget of gold with Oakland it gets shit on by that referee who took away from us the ability to have Samford beating Kansas the only reason they called a foul was because he fell like that to me is the only reason that he that they called a foul I know that it's like searching for the nugget of gold, but I think the thing that's worth noting is you have this every single year, though. So you always know you're going to get a St. Peter's or an Oakland. So it keeps you coming back, even though, like, yes, you're going to get a bunch of duds. It's that fun Oakland story. It's that fun St. Peter's story that keeps you going. Like, you, like I remember where I was when Lehigh beat Duke. Like, that's the shit that just stays with you forever, and it's awesome, and I don't know why you guys just aren't enjoying the moment. Put it, put it on the poll. Do you remember where you were when Lehigh beat Duke? And by the way, if you want to explain experience the midness for yourself Whoa. this is being played all over our great nation why don't you open up a game time account man yeah. i hear so much uh, so many great things about game time from our uh, fans out there deeply appreciative i feel like i'm providing a service to our fine people out there download the game time app create an account and use code dan for 20 dollars off your first purchase term supply last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed none of the silly games that are out there with all the other competitors right. game time for me is elite upper echelon download the app right now again i will double down on my point when it comes to march madness what you love the most about it is the time can i buy you a better attitude on game time can i upgrade <laughs> that yeah sure i i look i'm not i maybe maybe it's ingrained in me to go counterculture i i also like march madness but in experiencing it yesterday i realized that the only thing that sets it apart is being able to do this before you it's even getting have home. Lunch. Yeah, it's getting home and, and putting on the games. You got it's the amount. Games no, going. It's, the, it's the amount, Mike. It's not yeah. just that you've got something at eleven thirty. It's that you got but before, that amount's going before on. six p.m. You got twenty games Col going on. Any college football Saturday. Any college football Saturday. But you said you Saturday. It's the weekend. This is the weekday. Yeah. This is when we have nothing. This is when we have like Bengals Colts on a Thursday night. Again, you have the NBA. You have the NHL. 
you have simultaneous games going on all the time. And I think a lot of what's happening with March Madness is nostalgia because it came at a time where you weren't able to watch multiple games at the same time. And you had one network basically cutting to dramatic finish. It was a red zone before the red zone. And okay. while it's awesome and it still remained kind of good, it's something that's more available than ever for any type of sport. So I think a lot of that shine has worn off and you're just left with the quality on the, on the field to play and it's not that good. It's the reason that I like college football so much, where if you have an upset in the NFL, you have an upset in the NFL. And if you have an upset in college football, it's the craziest thing in the world. Right, no one right. can believe Alabama lost. It's the same thing with March Madness. Right. If the Pistons beat the Celtics, okay, you'll get a 30-second hit on Sports Center and you're done. When Oakland beats Kentucky, everyone is talking about it. Right. Everyone is involved with this tournament, filling out their bracket. It's a community thing. It's fun. We all care. And maybe you should look at the positive side of things. I like it. I'm Mike, not saying I don't like it. I'm just like you don't like it. Mike no, Armando Baycott's going to be at UNC for his tenth year. Yeah. You're not excited about no, that? He was at UNC before Patrick Mahomes won a single Super Bowl. That is a real how can you stat. not love that? You know what? I have a top five for things about March. Yes. Oh, okay. All right, go go oh, for it. Oh. Number five, Tom Izzo. Hang on, give me a second. I'm new at this. People bet Who changed against, all this. People bet against Tom Izzo yesterday. How, how dare Tom you? Tom Izzo in March? Are you kidding me? How dare you? He's he's so dialed in. You think about Coach Cal, great recruiter, good co- uh, good coach. Then he gets to March. Crap, right? Tom Izzo, the complete opposite during the season. Eh, but then when it gets to March, he's dialed in. I I really do feel the way Mike is looking at this though is like the person who buys a thousand lottery tickets, very excited, and then none of them come in. But if one of them comes in, if there's an Oakland in there, all of a sudden you love March Th- midnight. That's how the parlay business keeps a going. Because it's about the one that you win. Guys, I like March Madness. After this, I'm going to a sports bar with my friends to watch March Madness. What I'm saying is it's not the greatest thing in sports that people make it out to be. In fact, when you compare it to the sports landscape, it's kind of mid. Number four, the aforementioned Armando Baycott playing his 10th season. The The players was going on at a similar time last week. With two amazing holes, a hotly contested competition. The players, the please. players, the players was I want to see is Armando Baycott for his ten season. That's what I want to see. Number three, Nevada blowing a seventeen point lead in the second half. That one hurt. That one hurt. You can't get that outside of March. You can, that but one, you can't. That one hurt. That one hurt a lot. I had, I had. A- Decent amount of quit on Nevada. Dayton ended you that game fool. on twenty four four run. Oh, you can't go against the Flyers. <laughs> Dayton in March? Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's a lock. Do they still host the first four? Is that is that still the tradition? I don't Possibly. get that one. Number no. two, the AD taking credit for Long Beach State getting into the Rick. Uh, please put his uh, picture on the screen here. I want to read this quote uh, because Dan Monson was fired and the press conferences uh, afterward in which all of this stuff was discussed because it was funny to listen. Uh, if you don't know the story, Dan Monson of Long Beach State was fired on Monday and then he, uh, you know, they make the tournament. They win their tournament and the athletic director Uh, whose name is Bobby Smitherin and looks exactly like you would think somebody who has no respect for 17 years of building Long Beach State into what uh, Monson built it into. He comes in after three or four months and he fires him. And then the quote is, my belief, and I haven't heard him say this. I'm just reading the quote, so I don't know if there's a smile on his face. I don't know if there's tongue in cheek involved here. I don't know. If tongue-in-cheek is even allowed anymore today, the way the internet works. Not the way that the internet works. Because choose one. Because I actually saw the video in question, and it looks like he's trying to make the most of it because he's got egg on his face. This is not a great look for him, despite making it to the tournament, which is an achievement for an AD. But, yeah, he made what most people would call is a mistake. So he's trying to make the most of it and have fun of an awkward situation. But the quote is pretty damning when you see it absent that. Uh, Roy, can you do me the favor, please, and find for me uh, the origins on tongue in cheek, how it is that that works, and also egg on his face. I'd like some of the origins of that as well because I don't know why someone has egg on their face. But the quote from Bobby Smitherin is, "My, my belief and hope, is that by doing what I did and the timing of it, they would play inspired, and that's what they did. 
I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but it worked. That's March. Now imagine that's Stugatz. That's yeah. not March. <laughs> Patino, too. Imagine that quote with a shit-eating uh, grin attached to it, and it changes it a little bit. Okay, the shit-eating grin. Let's talk about this for a second. That's if important. You were, if That's you another were, one that we you, have to look at. If you right. were eating shit, do you think you'd be grinning? Cause, it's a little one. But it's not a grin of happiness. Like, a shit-eating grin this is happy. This one does not make sense. This one does not make this sense. One, if I mean, eat, You know, the only time yeah, that yeah. shit-eating grin I've seen is my dog likes to eat the cat turds. <laughs> like, and, and, does and, it make him happy? Yeah, it does. He, uh-huh. That's the go. only time I've seen a shit-eating grin. Grin, uh, and it disgusts me. I've lost respect for my dog when he comes out of there with kitty litter on his face, and I'm like, "How'd you get in there again? We've booby trapped the entire house to prevent the way that you disgust me when you do this." Shit eating grin is possibly a contraction of grinning like a possum eating shit, later detached from meaning uh, persisting due to his vividness. So there you go. Thank you, Roy. I don't understand what the last so part possums of that eat shit sentence. and then they smile. Uh, well, there are a lot of nutrients. Possums got to get it where they can get it. And if animals are, are there sh- nutrients in shit? Because yes. I thought your body takes all the nutrients from the shit, and then Ex- all that's left excrement, yeah. is the shit. I think that if a possum's eating it, my guess is the possum is finding something in the way of nutrients from other animals having undigested things in their shit that possums can eat. I think it's like how manure is like used in soil, because I think there are nutrients in it. That would make sense in my brain, right? The possum is also, I don't know how your brain works, the possum is also not a, discer- a discerning beast of any kind. It is a pea-brained animal, and whatever it is that it eats, I wouldn't trust it uh, to do what it's supposed to be doing. Human feces is rich in potassium. Put it on the poll, please, at Levitard Show. Did you know that human shit was rich in potassium? Also put it on the poll, did you know that in the Atlantic Ocean, a crocodile could eat you in the Keys? Number one, Oakland's Jack Golke. By the way, I was just told something, and I have breaking news for everybody. Oakland is in Michigan. That was shocking. What? You didn't know that? Uh, you didn't know multiple yeah. Oaklands in this uh, country? I could, first time that Oakland's made a run for you guys? Yeah. No. We've I, learned, that. We've I, learned I, that. Not only did I learn that, I learned that the same kind of way that you learned it, Tony, but I when, when Mike was over by the breakfast in the eating area, I wandered past him and mumbled a secret shame. I said to him, I don't want to admit publicly or privately how much I've bet Oakland the last, I don't know, seven years, not just in the tournament, just any time I'm scrolling through bets and I'm bored and I see Oakland is playing, even if I don't know anything about them other than the fact that they're in Michigan because I learned that last time and I discover Golki when I turn on my television because not these I can't get these games. I'm not watching these games when I'm betting them, but if I see Oakland on the scroll, I'm like, I trust them to surprise some people. And they're going to surprise them as soon as you don't realize that they're in Michigan. Like that, that I discovered all of that the same way you learned of it also, yesterday. Jacksonville the State, time. not in Jacksonville. What? Well, Florida, anyways. Think about this. I was looking at this as Oakland, California, and I was like, Jack Golke in Oakland. I like it. Dog, <laughs> making it happen. <laughs> Jack Golke doesn't look like any Oakland I've ever seen in my On life. On the tougher side of the bridge. As you could see, how I was amused by it. Egg on your face goes back to the late 1800s, early 1900s, when audience would throw rotten eggs and vegetables at bad actors on stage, or actors would smash eggs on their faces to get laughs from the audience. I thought it was tomatoes that got thrown at people during that time. To uh, Rotten not- eggs and vegetables, yes, so that would be included. And uh, tongue-in-cheek is the last of these because I don't... Uh, did you guys think that that quote, when I'm reading that quote, it doesn't sound tongue in cheek. It sounds like the AD is taking credit for them making an inspired run because he fired the coach, who incidentally is working for not money. Honestly, James Harden, back again. I, he's up 21, so he's just joshing out there. It's against the Blazers. No respect for the other team. How are the Blazers feeling about things right now? No, no respect for anything. I, I've. Have any of you ever seen somebody close out a three on a teammate in an NBA no. Last week we saw Joe Missoula close out after the buzzer, was which was kind of weird and not talked about. That dude is odd. Yes, he's unusual. He is an odd yes, person. Yes, I cannot wait to see how that disintegrates in his lap because he is unusual.
Tongue in cheek, Roy. Give me tongue in cheek, please. The most believable explanation for its origin is that in the 1700s, people were show contempt or skepticism by using the tongue to poke out a budge in the cheek. By 1842, tongue in cheek had acquired its modern meaning, meaning take this with a grain of salt. It's intended to be humor, humorlessly ironic. Humorlessly? Humorously. Humorously. I want to go back to something that broke at the end of the show yesterday, and I and this show have been guilty over the years of uh, not being great about covering women's basketball. And through that time, Katie Meyer at the University of Miami built something that not only represents, you know, an enormous number of wins, but represents a kind of pioneering that none of us can possibly understand how hard it was to build everything she has built. I gave you the stat a few days ago that in college football, only one in five coaches are still in the place that they were in 2019. Like the turnover now is crazy in those jobs. To have somebody for 20 years leave on her terms, I mean... She's not happy with what the committee did and what happened with the punctuation at the end. I don't know. Mike's closer to the program. He'll tell us perhaps uh, how much that did or didn't have to do with the timing on what happened yesterday because she leaves pissed off. She leaves because she feels like the thing that she built at the end wasn't properly respected and was denied a tournament berth. But I don't want to ignore the fact that this woman working in the shadows has built something substantive out of nothing because this did not have any kind of following when she got here, and it got a following only because she built it, stayed with it, cares in a really, I'm not going to say an unusual way, but cares the way that you have to in order to have that kind of success for that long with all of the changes that have come. But that is a legitimate pioneer that retired yesterday in Miami, a name that's known nationally as a pioneer and... The only reason this doesn't stain the University of Miami is because she's just leaving and not yet taking another job, and I assume not going to take another job. But if she were to have taken another job, it would be an indictment on the University of Miami, and I just don't know enough of the details about why she left. She uh, she bleeds orange and green. She's still going to be around the program. There's a lot that has gone on in Katie's personal life. She's a newly married, a wonderful wife in, in, in Hunter. This came as a shock. She's still relatively young, um, but she has been doing this for a while. I can I can attest. Nineteen years doing one thing is is a very long time to be doing it. She's done it at a level that we've never seen before. <laughs> you can make an argument that she's on the Mount Rushmore of Miami athletic head coaches, and we've had a lot of great head coaches. Uh, you, you mentioned that she has a special relationship with her players, and that's unique. And a lot of coaches do have these really special bonds with their players. I've never seen anything quite like. She I've cares seen. unusually deeply and has since there was no one at the game. Yeah, she she wears her emotion on her sleeve. She connects the players on on much deeper levels, and she. It, Miami is a historical outlier for them to really achieve anything in athletics as a private institution with a really low student body is an achievement. And she established high watermark after high watermark after high watermark, uh, developed this program after a run in the elite eight to something that is actually getting resources. Now um, this yesterday came as a surprise and a shock and it was a little bit heartbreaking and once you pick up the pieces, you, you try to wonder where you, where you're going for uh, where you where you're going to from here. I'm so happy that Katie's gonna at least have a hand in it, and I hope she basically has the ability to name her successor. I think she's earned that right here, and it's my hope that it's Fitzroy Anthony, who's the lead assistant, who was lead recruiter on Miami's what is presently Miami's greatest recruiting class in the history of that program here at Miami. Uh, I think he'd be a tremendous hire, and I'm normally against promoting from within. And, and the AD should do a national search, but I think the answer is here. And if Katie wants that to be the answer, then I think we should all respect it. Great coach. Um, uh, if she were available in an open market, top jobs would be interested in her. She is a pillar, 
and it's really, really heartbreaking to see her go. She knows what's best for this program, though, so you got to have to trust her judgment. But uh, an icon just hung him up. And what's really, what's really a bummer about it is, I feel like us as a show, and we, we kind of are the talisman of the local market when it comes to um, speaking about things. We kind of just got around to recognizing this career. And that's a shame because we should have honestly been touting her for a very long time. Speaking of the local market and the local media, uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, Mike. what's grown into uh, what feels like Mike, Mike Ryan's genuine disappointment with the Miami Heat's media, with the team. Like, you've, you've been... A lot of people are annoyed in general with our show for how we're covering the Heat, and it's expansive how they get annoyed, that we talk about them too much, period, or that the way we talk about them is a little negative, emotional, and spoiled. The Heat media, though, has been, much of it, has been in those jobs for a long time. And there is a symbiotic relationship between the Heat and the media that is a little comfortable and there's not a lot of critique in the heat media there's a lot more critique in heat twitter and in social media there's a big giant gulf between the amount of criticism you get from the objective reporters who are paid to cover the team accurately and then only become very loud critics when it becomes clear to everyone that the heat is done with kyle lowry and then the heat media turns on Kyle Lowry, but it is interesting to watch sometimes how the Heat media doesn't feel very much all the time like an independent arm that is loudly critical of the team. I will say, though, that the team often doesn't deserve a lot of criticism, so that's also part of what dilutes the coverage. So last time I, I decided to sideswipe the Miami Heat and criticize them for a, a year and a season and an approach that I think is worthy of criticism. Terry Rozier, God bless him. Hit a game winner against a Donovan Mitchell less Cleveland Cavs and Miami got a win, a huge win for that, them. That, wait a minute, that whole sentence. Donovan Mitchell, God bless him. Donovan then, Mitchell less oh, Cleveland God bless Cavs. Terry I, I know, yeah. but I know, but yeah, Terry Rozier, yeah. God bless him, and then Donovan. That whole sentence. Yeah, well, I'm, I I don't want to necessarily take out the conventional media because I think the lines have blurred and there's a, a lot of non-traditional media that has found its way into what we can now categorize <laughs> as Heat media and Heat. Twitter adjacent. It's funny that as Twitter as a platform later became X uh, has gotten more toxic, Heat fans have gone the other way. I miss the days of 2010 where Heat Twitter was a very toxic place, very knee jerk, very hyperbolic. Oh, I loved it. You guys have changed. You guys have changed. And the people that are covering this, the most prominent accounts that are covering uh, the Miami Heat basketball organization aren't traditional media entities. And let me tell you something. I have found, especially since I seem to be the only person now in the world that feels like they can criticize the Miami Heat, which is a huge sea change. Look, about 25% of Heat media is actively trying to get hired by the Miami Heat. So you got to take that with a grain of salt. They are incapable of true criticism. They only show spine when it's evident to everyone that Kyle Lowry is out the door. Heaven forbid you say something about Kyle Lowry that might ruffle some feathers when he is here. That's not spine, though. That's that's not spine. Uh, heat Twitter and Heat media-adjacent accounts that have rightfully found their way into the conversation and do a great job of covering this team to a degree, generally spineless and some real chicken shit behavior from them. So let me tell you something. It is absolutely normal to criticize a team when they are in a run of poor form. You can also have long view conversations, but to, to just totally ignore certain facts and to be afraid of, of criticism. Guys, we were born in fire. We invented this toxic platform they call Twitter, and you've all just gone away like crabs scurrying, and now you're just all company men. Find your balls. Put it on the poll, please, at Lebitard Show. Uh, worst thing to hear about yourself. Spineless 
or chicken shit behavior because you you escalated spineless by going to chicken shit behavior and i think it should go from chicken shit behavior to spineless i also think you made up that stat about 25% no 25% it, of them are trying to get hired by all right, the Miami so heat. you made one of four yes. heat media members be- which is fine god bless you Again, with another God, God bless, bless you. That's, you know I, I, God I bless hope you get hired. God bless you. But you're afraid to criticize them because you're actively trying to get hired by them. You're that God, should bless you. And, and, and you talk yourselves into like the, the craziest stuff. I mean, the craziest stuff. I see tweets like, this is why the Miami Heat brought in Terry Rozier. You've been silent for three weeks. You've been silent. No, they brought him in for eight of 36 from the field, too. Do that. Amen. Show, show me that highlight package. Okay. Enough with this. I've got the God bless list here. We're doing Terry Rozier and then Heat Media, but not all of them, just a quarter of them. And people that like March Madness, I think March I, God Madness. bless them. Okay. And I think I, March. if I haven't said God bless Katie Meyer, uh, Katie Meyer, mm-hmm. add her to the list. God bless okay. her. Well, but just, and Alexander Barkov, God bless you. This list is Get back well in the line. Because you're putting Get Katie well. Meyer yeah. and Terry Rozier on the same God it's bless there's different. No, there's God bless you could be sarcastic and also no, sincere. But, it can't, but they, can't, they can't coexist. You've been, you, you've been using it just sarcastically. God bless Jack Olkey. Hallelujah. And don't no God bless you's to any of the opposing goaltenders that are facing the Florida Panthers lately. Oh, well, that, that all turn into Dominic Hasek. Roy, this is the worst stretch of the season for it's the Florida bad. Panthers. It, it what was, is happening here? Bad. You guys have <laughs> lamented ten days ago they're getting hot at the wrong time. Well, the Chris Cody should be really happy. Everybody <laughs> breathe. They've lost three straight after going on the best stretch in franchise history. They've had some injuries, and on top of that, the teams that they've lost to Carolina. Tampa Bay, and last night with Nashville, these are possibly the three hottest teams in the league right now. I've got bad news. (sighs) What is it? The Florida Panthers were plus 650, and I put a little quit on them to win the Stanley Cup. Oh, no. And then I think that's when the three-game skid started. God damn it, Tony. They've they've gone down. In fact, now they are co-favorites inside their own conference to win the Eastern Conference. He damned you. I'm putting my name on it. I'm putting my name on it. He didn't bless you with God. He damned you with God. Roy, your wife Impossible, Dan. I found him in the woods. Yes, yes, I know. Your wife is a holy woman. She cannot be happy with She's not. She's she's not. This is why he's fasting. I'm not fasting anymore. It ended on on Tuesday. So you atoned for all the God damn it's, and now you, you got new ones to atone for. I'm back, baby. I'm not too worried about the Panthers, though. Everybody breathe a sigh uh, of relief. Barkov should be coming back into the lineup on Saturday against, man, 
this league is incredible. If you look at that Saturday slate, if you see the games and the teams that are clashing on Saturday, it's insane. You have a national television game with a team now that has proven they can draw ratings in the Florida Panthers. You have Panthers at Rangers, two teams that are neck and neck atop the Eastern Conference, 8 p.m. primetime. Hopefully Barkov is back for that. I like that they're taking a cautious approach with Ekblad. We're starting to feel his absence a little bit. It's a murderer's row. After that, they have Philadelphia, which is a slightly easier opponent, you would say, if you're just looking at points. Philadelphia's had Florida's number, and they're getting him on the back end of a back-to-back. John Tortorella wants to drag everyone into hell that he plays with uh, and plays against. So it's a really difficult sport right now. The teams are so good. Nathan McKinnon plays hockey tonight, folks. That's appointment television. But I would be, I would be cautiously optimistic that this is going to happen. Whenever you rip off a run like that, this team has shown you whenever they get hot, they settle down a little bit, and they build themselves back up. So I'm, I actually think that they're going to be fine. I'm not worried about the Panthers, but last night, I know they came in hurt. Yeah, five days off, they had a little bit of rink rust on them, but that was embarrassing, man. They were entirely too slow against this Predators team. They got outclassed. They got outpanthered by Andrew Brunette's Nashville Predators. That one was a tough pill to swallow. Lucy yeah. is not happy with you guys talking uh, hockey when she wants to talk college basketball. Uh, I mean, she I mean, wants you're not helping. It's March. I mean, she just uh, – look, that's a good comeback from her. It's March. There's going to be time to talk. I feel like we've talked about college basketball today. Yeah. Again uh, – You've uh, hated on college basketball yeah, today. Right. You well, haven't given us our day. Right. We are a sports show. I know. We had a little tete-a-tete and, and, and we, a little back and forth. And the topic du jour – March Madness. I gave you a little different opinion. You spoke for the people. You remain popular. I talk too much. I'm the villain. We're all happy. That's what keeps this whole machine going. Exactly. Yeah. Disagree. I really what? want to talk about Coach Cal after the Kentucky loss yesterday because it. I think it became like very clear to me that NIL was sort of going to be the death of Coach Cal because I don't want to say anything or accuse him of anything, but PayPal Cal had an advantage before NIL that now, allegedly, he no longer has because it's open to everybody, and I think you're starting to see it. Kentucky doesn't recruit as well as they once did. Even when they do, they're losing in the first round of the tournament. They lost to Oakland this year. They lost to St. Peter's two years ago. That's Those are double-digit seeds. And now Kentucky basketball is at this really crazy point where if you want to remain a relevant program, you have to get rid of, rid of Coach Cal. His buyout is over $33 million. Get rid of him. <laughs> I think they can't get rid of him, but uh, this is – Coach Cal is now the latest because his comments, it kind of feels like he's been laying the foundation for his exit for quite some time, seeing the writing on the walls. There is no bigger red flag for me that if you decide to, than if you decide to leave college athletics after you were running shit for 20 years. Because it leads me to believe you were doing something that wasn't on the up and up. And I know I'm not breaking any news I mean, here Saban's with not Coach Cal. Any of that. But Saban's Saban, not oh, getting, he's Saban. not getting any of that. Saban, that's what pisses me off. Because I don't know if you saw him speak to, to representatives. Yeah. But, and I want to be very careful because I respect the man immensely. We, play, we played it with him sitting next to Ted Cruz. We yeah. played that sound and yeah. it bothered everybody. Yeah. Man of high character, despite lying to Dolphins fans. He has since atoned for that. One of the greatest leaders in the history of sports. Tell me if I've said enough to protect me from what yes. I'm... He behaved like a punk ass oh. when he was on the hill. He behaved like a oh. punk ass, sore loser, sore loser. Displayed to be, he is not a punk ass. He is a titan. He is the greatest to ever. Do it in a sport where it's really hard to be that great. But also, he had some advantages that other people started getting, and they were above board. And then he left. He, he dipped. I'm not going to say he tucked his tail in because he almost beat Michigan, the national champion. But the game changed. The game changed, and he left. Gino Oriema, writing's on the wall there. Coach Cal, writing's on the wall there. Unprecedented runs these coaches have had, and when the talent gets dispersed, you see that they don't want any part in the game anymore. Which, once again, a little chicken shit behavior. Okay, uh, punk ass. I don't know what the hierarchy are, is on this. Roy, can you look up for me, please, why there's writing on the wall? Uh, I, I'm not familiar. This might be biblical yeah, in origin. Um, I don't know what it is in origin. I was Shadrach, you? Meshach, and Abednego. I don't. Uh, it might have been. Do I you think King Nebuchadnezzar's in there somewhere. 
Iowa, are you going to Iowa this weekend? Well, I go by Lucy. That's what my birth certificate says. And, yes, I'm so excited. We're going to Iowa for the first round of the tournament. So if you thought I talked about Caitlin Clark a lot before, just you wait. We're flying out tonight. We're going to go to the first round, on, I guess, tomorrow. And then Monday they'll play the winner of West Virginia Princeton. And it'll be a little celebrities watch. Pat McAfee's going to be there. He's doing a show there. Why didn't we do a show there? Uh, well, you're going as a representative. Yeah, but it's all hard. Of us I, I had a conversation with Skipper the other day about what things cost to move us, and he said, and he called us your traveling circus, and it's it's a lot of people. Uh, so is Pat McAfee, but that's the worldwide leader, and we're a startup company, and so we're sending just Lucy and an assortment of resources as opposed to all of us going to do a tournament game there. Me and Rose. <laughs> Uh, in the book of Daniel, chapter 5, verses 5 through 31, you can great find book, that. Great book, by the way. Great book. Yeah. In which the prophet interprets some mysterious writing that a disembodied hand has inscribed on the palace wall, telling King Belshazzar that he oh, will Belshazzar. be overthrown. And this is the saga that culminates with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> it's, uh, I think it's Shadrach, man, Meshach, sure. and Abednego with Jason. But they, I mean, got, they were in the fire, correct? Yeah. yeah. Off yeah. the air, I called that that was the book of Daniel. Yes. <laughs> like, I went to Christian school, K5 through 12. You did a, a little hip-hop there, and I wanted to ask the group here, Does anyone? did anyone recoil when Kendrick said, there is no big three, there's just, just me? Being, me. He, he knocked out uh, Kendrick Jay is Cole. so back, Dan. <laughs> Kendrick is so back with one verse, we are back. There's no big three, it's just me. It's just big me. I'm going to put it on Peter Rosenberg, who called him the greatest MC ever, and that was like two albums ago. Kendrick, for me, is him. But J. Cole's also in that But he's never done that to Drake and J. Cole before, right? Uh, he does, he, 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 no. He, but, there were shots fired across yeah. the bow, though, because he also had another uh, line in that verse talking about how Prince outlived Michael Jackson. Drake has famously compared himself to Michael Jackson. It's like there's a lot of things going, going on there. But they, but they do these songs together. They occasionally collaborate, and they say these things. It's not like they're getting one over. It's not like Cannabis and LL Cool J for hip-hop fans out there. So they're just saying things. Yeah, and, and J. Cole, I don't know if you saw a recent interview that he did. Well, it wasn't actually that recent, but J. Cole actually had a hand in – in the discovery of Kendrick Lamar. Yeah. So there's a, there's a lot of mutual respect there, but I do think Kendrick's the best. And if you can't listen to a dude in an NHL all-star Sergei Bobrovsky jersey about hip-hop, who can you trust? <laughs> I wanted uh, to ask you guys uh, if you wanted to take a stab at it. I don't know if you guys drive in the same way I do and see the same billboards I do, but right across from the arena, advertising to people who park before going to a Heat game, there is a giant billboard for a person selling a skill set that is asking you to fear the beard, and the billboard just reads, winning is my sport. And I want to ask you guys what you think that is a commercial advertisement for, because when I see it, I don't think of winning is my sport or fear the beard with the profession insurance attorney. I was going to say, ah! I, can, I can recuse myself because I've seen these commercials. And on the Metro Rail, he actually has big pictures of himself and his little cartoon characters. Like, my sport is winning, and he's there, like, very serious. It's a beard. Yes. I love that. It, it is. My sport is winning. It's, it's a very aggressive marketing campaign, and he's really – I think we can all side with him if it's against the insurance company. Like, that – you can go aggressive as That's an insurance – where the money is, though, Dano. <laughs> You can go aggressive with your marketing and advertising if you're someone who wants to tell others, I'll help you go after the insurance company. I'm an insurance attorney, and uh, winning is my sport. But his law firm is called your, in, your insurance attorney or something like that? Like, not in, like, names and then, like, the name of the— I don't know what it—I just saw insurance attorney. I didn't even see a name on the billboard. I just saw wow. a beard— I saw that winning is his sport, and then I saw an occupation uh, that said insurance attorney. I did not see a name for what it is that was being advertised there. I don't know if I would trust him as a lawyer. Because of that advertising? Just because, I mean, well, you're an insurance he's attorney. He's like, that's a not lawyer. Be for a law firm. <laughs> I don't okay. know. What it, I mean, it's but he said he's he a lawyer that's taking out advertising. Okay. I think it's a bit of a red flag right there. Oh, that he's just a lawyer. Uh, speaking of attorneys, attorneys should have looked over Caden Proctor's uh, contract, no doubt. Uh, 
we've talked about Iowa athletics a little bit on this show. I don't know if you've had the opportunity to talk about what Caden Proctor did. For those that don't know, Caden Proctor was from Iowa, had initially committed to Iowa, ended up going to Alabama, then went in the transfer portal and went back to Iowa. It was a huge get for Iowa, but as he went back to Iowa, he kind of let the cat out of the bag and revealed that Iowa reached out to him while he was enrolled at Alabama. Iowa got in trouble for it, and then it was announced a couple of days ago that Proctor has re-entered the transfer portal and is now headed back to Alabama, leaving everybody to wonder, wait a second, did this guy just steal money from Iowa? What's the latest on this, Lucy? His stat line for Iowa, zero minutes played, zero snap played, one NCAA investigation, and unknown amount of money taken from Iowa's collective. So basically, Caden Proctor, once Nick Saban left, decided to come back to Iowa. He was committed to Iowa up until National Signing Day, and then was like, ah, I got you. Just kidding. I'm going to Alabama. And we were like, you know what? Best of luck, my guy. Live your life. He then leaves. God bless you. Com- yeah, God bless him. Okay, let me write that down. Comes back to <laughs> Iowa um, and randomly, like it was kind of out of the blue, He's it's announced that he's transferring back to Alabama. He came to Iowa, and this the collective for Iowa came out and said he did take money from us, not from anything that was fan donation, but just like business deals or advertising. I don't know how much of that is accurate because they do need to save face because you don't want to say, hey, we gave this guy a shit ton of money. He came, took it, and left. But because there is no real like system where, you know, He's held accountable for that. And I'm all for players getting paid. I'm all for NIL. There is a potential that he came, took a crap ton of money from Iowa, watched Caitlin Clark play basketball, and said, you know what? I'm good. I'm going back to Alabama. It's one of the weirder NIL stories we've seen, and I think there's going to be a ripple effect because people are going to want more regulation now. Well, but, they always did. Well, there, there should be a collectively bargained standard because different states have different rules, and depending on the state, he could have gotten paid in full. Hell, there in certain states, you can just get paid, and I know this for a fact, certain schools or certain collectives pay for just commitments, just a graphic that people can break at any time. So there's going to be way more Caden Proctors and Rashadas and Cormani McLeans before this actually gets any kind of regulation. Incredible logo on the beard, by the way. Yeah. So good. Yeah, that is a great logo.